Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for joining us on this chilly January evening for a program that we have entitled Happy Viennese New Year. So I will ask all of you if any of you have seen the New Year's program that is put on annually by the Vienna Philharmonic and that is broadcast around the world. Has anybody seen or heard of this program? See a few hands out there, okay. So hopefully this program will sound familiar to you. And for those of you who have not seen or heard this program, you're in for a real treat because um, it's really a, a wonderful tradition um, uh, in the Vienna Philharmonic to present a concert of light classical music on New Year's Day every year. Uh, the tradition of a New Year's program goes back to the 19th century, but uh, the modern version of this Vienna Philharmonic program actually began in 1939. And what makes this um, program uh, distinctive and unique is that it's not only light classical music, but these are programs that heavily feature music from uh, the Strauss family dynasty. Um, when I say Strauss, you may think of Richard Strauss. It's not that Strauss, actually. It's Johann Strauss I, Johann Strauss II, Joseph Strauss, and Edward Strauss. Four Strausses that together created a, a, a trove of wonderful, light classical music that is heard in concert halls to this day. Now, most of this music uh, comes in the form of waltzes, um, or polkas, or marches, or in some cases, overtures. And the Vienna Philharmonic programs consist primarily of the music of uh, the Strauss family, but also other uh, Viennese and German composers. But the, the tie that really binds is that this is all light and fun music. Uh, and really, these programs are terrific. I strongly recommend that, that you check these out. They're available on PBS, and, and you'll hear them on, on, on local radio as well. They're really wonderful programs, and they are the inspiration for the program that you're going to hear tonight. So that program back in 1939, uh, that was led by Clemens Krauss, an, an Austrian conductor, uh, began with a work that you are just about to hear, a work called Morgan Blater. Um, it's a set of waltzes by Johann Strauss. Uh, Morgan Blater uh, translates as morning journals or morning papers. So we're gonna begin our, uh, our Viennese program rather appropriately with a set of waltzes by Johann Strauss.
to you all again. Once again, I'm Phoenix Crockett, the managing director of the Me Too Orchestra. And I'd like to just introduce us a little bit. I'm gonna walk around so that those in the balcony can see me as well. I'm gonna go stand over here with percussionists. Hi guys. As a group who so often plays in elementary school gymnasiums or prisons or outdoors, it's lovely to be with you here tonight at the Con Toys. We've had a lovely season so far, playing with our new conductor, who we've been having a lot of fun with. Mike has been absolutely wonderful for this group. I've loved to see us grow and expand in the post-COVID time. I started with this group uh, seven years ago, I think it is now. I sat right over there as a cellist. Uh, and I found this group at a time when I really needed it. Uh, I was looking for a community. I had just been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and I didn't know who to talk to about it, and I didn't know how to go forth in my life and um, live on in a healthy way. And that's actually the point of this group, is for those with mental health disorders and those that support them to come together um, and make art. And uh, as you can hear just now, what ends up being made there is, is really special. The idea of our name, Me Too, which actually predates the ever important Me Too movement, is that a musician might come into the room and say, you know, I, I actually live with this problem that uh, affects me day to day, and they might get that response. Me too, me as well, you know. Um, I'll try to keep my remark remarks short tonight, I promised that I would, but there is a donation box out there on the table, and there's also a QR code you can scan in your program. We are a small nonprofit. We survive mostly on donations, so if you have it to give, uh, we ask that you do so that we can keep making this awesome music and creating the stigma-free space for musicians and for audience members to enjoy. Thank you. So uh, we are going to continue our program now with um, a polka. Actually, it's the first of three polkas that we're gonna present to you. As I mentioned, uh, the most common forms uh, for the music that the Strauss family wrote was waltzes, polkas, marches, and uh, overtures. Um, now, a lot of people think all polkas are created equal, but what you're going to hear is that these three polkas that we're gonna play for you have uh, very different uh, tempos, very, they're played at different speeds, and uh, very different uh, styles of music as well. This first one that we're going to play is called Foyer Fest. More about that title in just a moment. And this is what um, the Strauss is called a polka française, it's a French style polka, which is a little bit slower, uh, a little bit more stately in terms of the tempo and the presentation. Now, the, the title Foyer Fest uh, is the, the German term which translates into fireproof. And you might think, well, that seems like kind of an odd title for a polka. Well, the reason for that is that this work was commissioned by a company, uh, an Austrian company, uh, very uh, successful in the 19th century at building fireproof safes. Uh, this is what they specialized in. And in fact, in honor of the 20,000th safe that they produced, the owner of the company went to the Strauss family and said, would you write a, a, a piece of music in honor of this, this landmark? So uh, the work that you're going to hear, um, I encourage you to give some special attention to the percussion section, because you're going to hear some really metallic sounds coming out of that section. In particular, Deb Gay is going to be beating on some metal back there, which is meant to suggest the sound of anvils, which of course were so critical in the production of these fireproof safes. We hope that you enjoy Fleer Fest.
Hi, everybody, and uh, thank you for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it, and I think I can speak for the rest of the group and say that we're honored to uh, play with you. Um, I began my journey uh, with me too about six years ago. I was living in a sober house and really right on the edge of um, uh, life. Um, I was in a therapist's office, I saw the Me Too flyer, and, uh, and, and then I started joining. And it's been a joy ever since. Um, since that time, um, I have had my fair share of ups and downs. Um, uh, I came out as trans, and now I'm transitioning back. Um, and, uh, but uh, since uh, during that time, I also moved out of the sober house and got my life together and bought a house and um, uh, am doing fairly well now. I am recently coming out of a um, uh, uh, nervous breakdown and minor depressive episode, um, but I have uh, uh, clarity now, and in fact, I think I'm going to be joining, um, uh, giving real um, uh, 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 insight into uh, getting back into uh, school and becoming a therapist. Um, so it's been quite a journey for my Me Too uh, uh, journey these last six years, but it's been an evolution ever since. And uh, Me Too has been a rock um, for my sanity. It's always been a tether for my mental stability. Um, and um, I always had Me Too to be able to come uh, to uh, in my dark times and in my joys as well. So it is a pleasure to uh, be here tonight uh, to play with you, and if, um, uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the concert. <laughs> So we're going to continue now with another polka. Uh, this one is a Polish now, a fast polka, and it's entitled Trich Trach. Now that name uh, translates to chit chat, and it was written, it was inspired by, I guess you could say, uh, the fact that Johann Strauss II knew that one of the um, uh, qualities of Viennese society was the penchant for gossip. Um, so this, this was something that was very much evident to anyone who was involved with the Indian society of the time. And it's really easy to imagine when you hear this music, which is so full of humor, uh, all the, the, the whispers behind, uh, behind uh, you know, gloves, gloved hands, and, and, and uh, fans. Uh, as the Viennese uh, society did indeed chit chat, probably during the concert. They should have been listening to the music. <laughs> we hope that you enjoy Fritz Trash. <laughs>
13.10k. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Deb Gay, and as Phoenix said, I am a percussionist with the Me Too Orchestra here in Burlington. Uh, so I'd like to give you a little background about myself. Um, I had what I thought was a pretty normal life growing up. I was aware that some of my relatives had issues, um, mental health issues to be exact, and they didn't always seek help. But my immediate family seemed to be okay, and so it never occurred to me that I, in fact, might be in, at risk of the same things. So off I went to college, and in my first year, I had, what I didn't know then, was a panic attack. Oh my. Well, I was given some medication, um, but nobody gave me a diagnosis, so on I went, graduated from college, uh, got a job, and then met my then husband-to-be, which precipitated something that I had never experienced before. I knew he was going to ask me to marry him. And every morning for a month, I would wake up with the worst panic attack. It's as if I was about to be run over by a freight train every morning, curled up in the fetal position, sobbing. I had to pull myself together after those episodes and go to work. Finally, someone took me to see a counselor. I was put on some medication still wasn't given any diagnosis, so I thought, I'm fine. We got married, we're happy, we moved to Vermont, and things seemed to be great, but then I started having anxiety again, and some depressed thoughts, but surely it was just circumstantial. Anyway, I continued my te teaching career, and in 2016, a teacher at the middle school where I worked said, you know, my son plays percussion in the Me Too Orchestra, and they're looking for another percussionist. You play, don't you? And my first thought was, what's a Me Too? <laughs> what kind of orchestra is that? Is that like, you know, avant-garde? Is that what it means? Well, I went, not telling the current conductor that I hadn't played for 20 years, but you know. Um, so I joined them. And I was told about its purpose. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great group to support people with mental health challenges and those that support them. So here I am, blissfully ignorant again, thinking, that's great, I can support people. Not thinking that I had anything to say me too about. But finally, it felt more and more like I was standing on the other side of a pane of glass looking in at my fellow orchestra members. Something was missing. You may think by this time, ah, oh, Dad, how clueless can you get? <laughs> but finally, I happened to look through my medical records, and there it was. Aha. Under my list of conditions, anxiety and depression. Oh, me too. <laughs> So, Me Too has set me free from being in denial, but also from hiding the things that I struggle with. Me Too has been supportive. They have accepted me for who I am. And I can't say enough about everyone here. And a special thanks to Alex McGowan, who has always reached out to me and talked with me, and with whom I've been able to share so many things. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Deb. We uh, continue now with the third of our three polkas, uh, and this is one that is um, a little different than the, the previous two in that the, the title has nothing to do with how it was commissioned or what it's meant to represent. 
but actually has to do with the technique that the string players are going to use to make notes, to make sounds in this music. It's called the pizzicato polka. And every sound that you'll hear from the string players is not going to come from their bows. You may have noticed that they've already set their bows down. They're not even holding bows anymore. But all the sounds are going to come from them plucking the strings on their instrument, a technique that is known by the Italian term pizzicato. So uh, the only sounds you're going to hear from the strings are those pluck sounds. But those aren't the only sounds you're going to hear in this music. Because we've got a percussionist back there who I think really wants to be a string player. And he's, <laughs> he's going to horn in on the action here in the middle of, of the pulpit. But the string players, you know, Nathan, they don't seem to mind. So I think they're going to make you an honorary member of the string section for this one. So this is the pizzicato pulpit. about what we do or why we're here. Um, and so I open that up to you all. You can also ask questions from the balcony, but you'll have to shout. Mm -hmm. 
Great question. Who thinks they come from the farthest? <laughs> Where do you come from, Alex? Uh, I live in East Cows, so it's about an hour and a half away. Alex lives in East Cows, about an hour and a half away. A lot of us are 20 to 40 minutes away from our rehearsal space, which is in Burlington. Our conductor is 45 minutes away from our rehearsal space. Great question. Yes, ma'am. Why is it music that brings them together? Why is it music that brings us together? <clears throat> I have a couple of answers for that. One is it's the thing that we all have in common. We all work vastly different jobs and have different lives and family lives, and a lot of us would never have crossed paths if not for the fact that we picked up an instrument at some point in our childhood or teenhood, and that's what we had. And it's a specific kind of music. All of us wanted to do this thing particularly. Um, that there is a group this large in such a small town who uh, had that musical pull, who had uh, positive feelings artistically about orchestral music is actually really amazing. You don't always get to see community orchestras like this um, in places as rural as this. So that's our, that's our, that's our connecting stream is that we, we have the instruments, we practice them, and uh, we enjoy each other's company. Yes, sir. If we all yell encore at the end, will you give us an encore? <laughs> We do not have a play at Don Core, we don't play adult peekaboo, but we hope you do enjoy the songs we have left. <laughs> Fun. Yes. Yes. And without further ado, one more time, Michael Colbert. So actually, you may not realize this, but you gave me the perfect segue to describe the last two selections on this program. So uh, we are about to play the beautiful blue, on the beautiful blue Danube, is the full title, although people generally know it as the blue Danube, followed by the Radetzky March. And these two pieces are always on course on the NFL Harmonic Music Program. Um, Always within there, there are usually three standard encores, and these are usually two of those three. In fact, this piece is so beloved and so expected by the Viennese audiences that every time they play this, it starts very, very quiet, it's interrupted by applause because the audience is so excited and, and they act like they're surprised, right? They know it happens every single year, but every year they get so excited they start applauding, so the conductor usually has to stop turn around, acknowledge the applause, and, and there's a standard uh, Austrian greeting that, that the conductor offers the audience when that happens. So as much as we want this concert to resemble one of those Vienna Philharmonic concerts, please don't feel the need to start clapping when you do this, right? Uh, but this is uh, undoubtedly Johann Strauss's most famous waltz on the beautiful Blue Danube. And I'll offer a few more thoughts about Radetzky when we get there. But first, Blue Danube.
Well, yeah, before we finish up the program, I just wanted to thank all of you uh, again for coming out and joining us uh, on this uh, lovely January evening. I hope you have enjoyed the program and that we might see you again at another V2 concert in the future. Uh, we're going to wrap things up here with uh, another one of the traditional encores for the Vienna Philharmonic Years program. This is the Rodetsky March by Johann Strauss I. And uh, this is a march that uh, actually has a little bit of audience participation. So there is a lot of clapping that happens during this march. And the Viennese, they know, because they do this thing every year, they kind of know when to clap and when not to clap. So I'm going to help you guys, as I know for many of you, this is the first time. But it's not just that you're going to clap, OK? There are a, a couple of other little bits of guidance I need to offer you as well. So it starts with a very light, genteel clapping. Right? You know, these were fine Austrians in their royal gold suits, you know, very, very, very classy, just a very light clap. But then things get a little more vigorous. So when you see me turn around and really give you this, that's when I want to hear a little bit uh, stronger clapping, all right? And the third cue, and this perhaps is the most important cue, is when you're not supposed to clap, okay? And you're going to see me doing this. So when I turn around and give you the finger, that's when we stop clapping. <laughs> But you're going to come back in again when, when it's time. You'll figure this out. It's, it's pretty easy to figure out, but I will help you along. We hope that you enjoy the Radetzky March.
Orchestra. Enjoy your evening.